Hi guys. It is a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful day here. In the collapse of global industrial civilization on this lovely, it is Friday, November 20, 6, 2021, I believe, otherwise known as Black Friday. I'm gonna have to take my, uh, I think I'm gonna have to take this camera down to Walmart here on Black Friday. I don't think Black Friday is quite the event that it used to be since Cyber Monday came along. But since it is Friday, whatever color Friday it is, uh, it is time once again for my ecological meltdown around up rant where I simply check in with mongabay.com with Rhett Butler and the boys and girls to see what is on their minds as the rest of us are flocking to Walmart for flat screen TVs. We will see what Manga Bay has to say about the state of the planet here at Thanksgiving of 2021. I'm sorry to see that Rhett has gone back now to this new format on his, uh, I sent, uh, I, I sent Rhett an email of few minutes ago saying brother I like the looks of your new format but it's not as user friendly but anyway I chose what did I choose seven or eight so I think maybe eight stories that we're gonna look at uh, before heading off into the wilderness here on Black Friday and we're gonna start as we often do in the uh, Amazon rainforest. I think I've already mentioned this in a rant earlier this week from the mainstream media. This is Manga Bay's coverage of this story. <coughs> Amazon deforestation unexpectedly, unexpectedly surges 22% to highest level since 2006. Well, I guess what Rhett's talking about here unexpectedly surges 22%. I expected it to surge about 82%. So I'm a, I, I assume what he means is the Amazon deforestation unexpectedly surges only 22% to its highest level since 2006. Uh, Deforestation in Earth's largest rainforest surged 22% to the highest level since 2006, according to official to data released by the Brazilian government. So, once again, if you've already, if you missed my rant the first time, understand this is the Brazilian government's uh, report, which means it's probably a fraction of the real truth. Preliminary <clears throat> analysis of satellite data uh, shows that 13,235 square kilometers, otherwise known as 5,110 square miles of Amazon rainforest was cleared otherwise known as obliterated off of the face of the planet in the Brazilian Amazon between August 1st, 2020 and July 31st, 2021. Uh, yes, the sharp increase came as a surprise. Well, I, I, I don't know to who. Data uh, from one of these uh, deforestation monitoring systems had set expectations for a modest year-over-year -year decline in the rate of forest destruction. Uh, why in the hell would any sort of Brazilian Amazon deforestation monitoring analysis be predicting a modest decline over uh, deforestation. What, what planet do they live on? 
I am absolutely shocked that it was only 22%. And for the simple reason it wasn't 22%. That is the Brazilian government's own estimate. Anyway, uh, surprise. Come on, Rhett. All right, we're going to go from Brazil to South Africa to an ecosystem you have never heard of called the Reinosterveld the Reinosterveld, for South Africa's dwindling Reinosterveld biome, there is now a panic button app. Yes, the new app for the planet. There is a panic button app for the planet. I just put on, uh, my buddy just put on WhatsApp uh, on my new smartphone, so maybe I need to put on the panic button for the planet on my new smartphone. The Rhinosterveld shrubland once covered the Swartland and Overberg regions of western South Africa, but its rich soils led farmers to clear it for agriculture. This is the Sandhill Cranes coming in for a landing. Remaining fragments of the ecosystem continue to provide habitat for birds uh, like the endangered black harriers uh, and vulnerable uh, mammals, blah, blah, blah. Uh, a panic button app has been developed in South Africa to alert authorities to threats facing the Rhinosterveld the country's most endangered ecosystem. Yes, let's all get the panic button for the planet as we're in a planet panic. All right, let's go down to the bottom of the ocean. We're from the Brazilian Amazon to the South, to South Africa to the bottom of the ocean. <clears throat> If marine noise pollution is bad, deep sea mining could add to the cacophony. Do you think so? A new report suggests that the noise pollution alone produced by deep sea mining activities could have far reaching effects on the marine environment from the surface to the sea floor. While there are many studies that measure the impacts of noise pollution on marine life, more research is needed to fully understand how the sound from deep sea mining could affect the ocean. Due to the shortage of information, experts say a precautionary approach to deep sea mining noise is required, and that queer Clear, clear regulations must be put into place. Yes. While deep sea mining has yet to begin, a subsidiary of Canada-based The Metals Company plans to start mining in less than two years. And uh, I just want to break in here to this weird story I saw on the mainstream media last night. I should have flagged it. And what it is, is that there was what the mainstream media is calling a mysterious sonic boom off the coast of uh, California somewhere. A mysterious sonic boom never explained in the mainstream media. And what happened is this giant, uh, weird-looking, deep-sea fish you know, the kind of fish living down there at the bottom, you know, way down there, like uh, a mile or two below the surface, washed up on the beach. What was that thing called? Uh, I can't remember. It was a wild ass looking fish. So they have a mysterious sonic boom and then deep sea fish 
start washing up on the beach a little while later and you're trying to tell me that uh, they're not already deep sea mining. The mysterious sonic booms. Gotta go back to my two pairs of glasses. Okay. Let's see. This, this is in no particular order. Alright. <clears throat> We're gonna head over to uh, Sub-Saharan Africa and talk about palm oil at a quote certified, you know, sustainable certified palm oil plantation in Nigeria. Soldiers and conflict over land. Yes, uh, sounds certifiably sustainable to me. Wow. The Okomu, the Okomu Oil Palm Company is owned by Sockfin, which is a French-Belgian multinational corporation that operates palm oil plantations across West and Central Africa. Okomu's concession lies inside a forest reserve uh, that was gazetted back in 1912 and was once among the most pristine rainforest in Nigeria, home to forest elephants, leopards, and chimpanzees. For more than a decade now, Okomu has been in conflict with some of the communities inside its concession over land ownership and the usage rights inside the reserve, otherwise known as, uh, you know, bulldozing down the forest reserve. In early 2020, the round table on sustainable palm oil certified, certified Okomu's main estate as sustainable uh, after an audit, uh, blah, blah, blah. Campaigners say the firm failed to perform adequate due diligence and that Okomu's certification is just one example of the art, the round table on sustainable palm oil's shortcomings. One more time, I've been doing this for, is it 11 years now? There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. I don't give a damn what that BS little green washing label uh, on, on, on these products. It, it's a bunch of crap. Anybody with a brain knows this. There is no such thing as sustainable palm oil. It doesn't matter what shape your table is in. It, 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 it is just, and it, it, it's not just palm oil. This whole thing of these eco certifications are one of the biggest bright green lies uh, of them all. It, it is utter unadulterated horse shit. These eco labels. Any clueless moron believing one word of this crap. Anyway, from Nigeria, what's next on Rhett's uh, Rolodex? We're going to go back to Brazil as long as we're talking about this BS greenwashing. Here is how greenwashing unfolding in Brazil. In Brazil, an agribusiness haven's green pivot, green pivot, leaves many skeptical. I love that word. The Amacro project was conceived in early 2020 as an agribusiness hub in a heavily de deforested part of the Brazilian Amazon but just one year later is now being touted as a hub for sustainable 
sustainable agribusiness in the middle of the uh, Amazon rainforest. Now renamed the Abunya Madeira Sustainable Development Area. It stretches across 32 municipalities uh, in this, in, you know, in the area of the Amazon, which last year accounted for nearly one quarter of the total deforestation in the Brazilian Amazon. This is an airboat you're hearing in the background. The, the, whatever they call this, the Sustainable Development Area project aims to attract investments into a wide range of sectors from agroforestry and fish farming to tourism and logistics as well as the agribusiness while promising to avoid deforestation through technology to help boost agricultural productivity. Despite these green claims, prosecutors, yeah, right, and nonprofit researchers say the prospect of new investment is already boosting land grabbing and deforestation in the area and argue that the best way to halt deforestation is to create protected areas, something that is nowhere included in the sustainability project. Yeah, the answer is to create protected areas. I have been on here every week, week after week, Rhett Butler, uh, pointing out there is no such thing as a protected area any more than there's any such thing as sustainable palm oil. The very notion of protected areas is a sick, twisted, laughable joke. The term protected area is a greenwashing pile of crap. Okay? Do we get it? Uh, anyway, what's next? Let's go over to Indonesia. In case you are not aware of this, were you aware of the fact that orangutans and their habitat in Indonesia need full protection now. <clears throat> wow. A new report underscores the urgency of protecting Indonesia's orangutans and conserving their remaining habitat, warning that Asia's only great ape is in crisis. The report from the Environmental Investigation Agency says the Indonesian government has systematically failed to protect orangutan habitat, enforce existing wildlife laws, or reverse the decline of the three orangutan species. This is uh, EIA policy analyst Taylor Tench, quote, for decades, Indonesia has prioritized industry and profit over environmentally over environmental health and biodiversity protection and orangutans have paid the price close quote the report calls for protecting all orangutan habitat much of which occurs in oil palm and logging concessions halting a dam project in the only habitat of the Tapanuli orangutan and recognizing indigenous claims to forest adjacent to orangutan habitat. Uh, anybody thinking for one minute that the Indonesian government, the Brazilian government, any government on the planet is going to prioritize habitat protection for critically endangered species over profit 
I, uh, I have a palm oil plantation to sell you inside a national park. Anyway, all right, we're going to head over to Japan. Uh, I've been uh, hearing this story for years. This is the latest uh, update on this story. <coughs> Our land, our life, Okinawans hold out against a new U.S. base in Japanese coastal zone. Opponents of the planned relocation of a U.S. military base in Okinawa say they remain undeterred despite the defeat in elections last month of the opposition party that supported the cause. Yes. Local activists plan to continue opposing the relocation of the marine base uh, to the Hanoko Bay coastal area. Uh, the proposed new facility, as well as other U.S. military bases in Okinawa, have been linked to toxic environmental pollution, military-linked sexual violence, and historical land conflicts between native Okinawans and the mainland Japan and U.S. governments. Uh, Anyway, good luck on uh, standing up to the U.S. military. All right, we got two more. Let's head over back to Sub-Saharan Africa, to Liberia, for this absolutely shocking uh, story. Liberian loggers felling trees outside their concession as the government stands by. Wow. A new report shows a case of illegal harvest of timber in Liberia has gone unpunished for more than two years. Wow. A 2019 audit had found that about 500,000 square feet of timber ostensibly logged from uh, this legal logging concession in Grand Bassa County was effectively untraceable. Wow. Yet permits for the sale and export of much of the timber were still approved. Uh-huh. Civil society groups are calling for tougher penalties against the companies involved, which they say appear to be happy, risking the modest fines against greater profits from illegal logging. They also say that the case in Grand Bassa is emblematic of a widespread problem, you know, like planet widespread. Quote, if you launch investigations into different community forests, the finding, findings would be more illegalities, close quote. And once again, this opens up this whole thing about the very notion of uh, the greenwashing notion of the difference between legal and illegal logging. Okay, bulldozing down forest and burning them, whether it's legal or illegal, is irrelevant. Okay, permit or no permit. Uh, one more. Oops. Uh, well, I thought there was one more, but I guess it got eaten. But anyway, I uh, understand I am talking to myself, and uh, I need to uh, 
I need to uh, take my camera down to the local Walmart on Black Friday for a little gorilla uh, filming down there, but I highly suggest you get out there and enjoy Black Friday while you still can. Uh, again, my Christmas budget for 2021 will be the same as my Christmas budget since 2008 and that would be zero 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 I just donated my uh, an annual $25 to uh, Manga Bay to say Merry Christmas to Rhett Butler how about this for an idea if you want to uh, give your friends a great gift give them a uh, send a donation to mongabay.com and make a donation in their name and I assure you your friend will be absolutely livid with you for uh, forsaking them to uh, support uh, Rhett Butler and Manga Bay's hard work to tell us how doomed we are anyway Come see me in the Point Lonesome Swamp. I had a my first potential buyer come by this morning. He says he is very interested in buying my place, so we shall see. Bye, guys.